I'm Steve Perry from BiblicalAnarchy.com offering you a Pauline defense of gay marriage. In first century Rome, there was no concept of homosexuality as we know it today. Same-sex relationships were largely pederasty. These were mentor-like relationships between adult men and adolescent boys. Unfortunately, they also included sex. Most other same-sex relationships were also abusive. They involved sex with slaves and prostitutes. What is clear is that there were virtually no monogamous, loving, sexual relationships between same-sex couples at the time of the Apostle Paul. Thus, they had no words that would accurately translate as homosexual. This is why the word didn't appear in the English Bible until the 1940s when the RSV introduced it. Moreover, the Greek word translated homosexual was literally made up by the Apostle Paul for the occasion. He derived the word from Leviticus 18 and 20 in the Septuagint. Arson means man and koitai means bed. Paul combined them to coin the word arson or koitai, men who bed other men. So, thus ends my attempt at a Pauline defense of gay marriage, right? Not so fast. If a married man has a one-night stand, which he instantly regrets and swears off, that is still adultery. One who carries on a years-long affair with several women commits the same sin, adultery. However, we can agree that the second is worse than the first because of the lifestyle. Worse still would be a man involved in an abusive and exploitative sexual relationship, say, for example, prostitution, slavery, or adolescent boys. And these are the only examples Paul would have of men betting other men. Moreover, the men doing this would typically also be married. This is a far cry from a loving, monogamous, same-sex couple of today. However, I'm still a far cry from a Pauline defense of gay marriage. So how do I get there? In Acts 15, the Jerusalem Council decides that Gentile converts should not eat meat sacrificed to idols. Paul knows this. He was there. Yet in 1 Corinthians 8, he says, We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. In verse 9, he calls it this liberty of ours. And in verse 10, he says, It is a matter of conscience. But how can he say that on a matter of law? Because to Paul, we are free from the law. In 1 Corinthians 6, 12, he says, All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. This leads us to 1 Corinthians 7, verses 8 and 9. Quote, To the widows I say that it is well for them to remain unmarried as I am. But if they are not practicing self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to be aflame with passion. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you two couples... They are single, but aflame with passion. Should they marry or stay single? Paul has told us that each of these four people should marry. What about now? All things are lawful unto me, so the question is, is it beneficial? We have already established that if they are aflame with passion, the answer is yes. The ball is in your court to establish why this ceases to apply if they are gay. Reasonable people can reach differing conclusions. I'm not saying those who disagree with me here are wrong. I'm simply showing a biblical way to conclude that same-sex marriage is acceptable. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more videos from BiblicalAnarchy.com.